What if you were the living embodiment of all pervasive peace? What if all sentient beings all around you increase their vibration towards harmony by merely being in your contact? What if through conscious reasoning, focused will, and intentional living, you reform yourself, thereby becoming a catalyst and sparking transformation in others? I'm Shilpa Lewis, meditation and mindfulness coach for midlife mompreneurs, and you are listening to Omni Present Awareness, the podcast that will inspire you to use your story to serve humanity in not just healing, but thriving as souls, each fulfilling their highest purpose. Welcome to Omni Present Awareness with Shilpa. This is your host, Shilpa Lewis, owner and founder of Omni Mindfulness Coaching. Before we get started, if you haven't already booked a free discovery session with me, click on the link in the description. I am a holistic transformational life coach specializing in helping midlife mompreneurs bring balance, clarity, and life alignment both personally and professionally so that you may live your best life. There is tremendous healing value in simply being able to know someone is holding authentic space for you to listen and be accessible as an accountability partner and mentor. If you feel overwhelmed or if you feel the need for some support navigating life as a mother or as an entrepreneur, I would love to provide you with my coaching. If any anecdotes from the stories of the guests from this episode, or any of the podcast episodes resonate with you, or if you find any value at all from the content from these episodes, then consider booking a free discovery call with me. Together, we can manifest my vision to be instrumental in the biggest rise in consciousness and awareness and human transformation. And now, Here is today's episode. Next up, a conversation I had with my mindfulness partner in awareness, Tanya of Xenia Coaching. For our upcoming Mindful Mompreneur Moments podcast, we will be launching next month. So stay tuned for that. Details to come. Our guest was Angel Lateral. Angel is a woman of many hats with one mission, empowerment and transformation of the individual and the things they impact. All of her work is geared at her clients being able to see where they have choices, options, autonomy, and responsibility in their life. She truly believes that knowing these things is the path to a fulfilled life and achieve success in any endeavor. As an attorney, she focuses on small businesses, estate planning, landlord and tenant related matters. She works with small and micro businesses to set them up with strategic systems, implementing a firm foundation to grow from proactively instead of just calling a lawyer when there is trouble. She works with people and families to ensure they are set up in a way that allows for their loved ones to have what they need when they are no longer here. She is also an instructor of project management for the University of Washington and a career-focused coach. Additionally, she is a poet, writer, traveler, and participant in a joyful life. She is also living proof that a multidimensional existence is possible, and that time and resources are abundantly available to a person in rhythm with their purpose and mission. In her words, the revolution of humanity starts with a single individual waking up to their highest potential and living it. And now, here's Angel.
Well, thank you, Angel, for being here. We are so excited. Thank you so much, Angel. Well, we'll jump I'm so glad to be here. Well, thank you. So we'll jump right in and we'd love to hear about your journey and particularly how you came about cultivating this amazing mindset that uh, perhaps many attorneys may not have and you um, seem very natural in that space. Yeah, so, you know, my journey to now is it's, it's quite a few years long. Um, <laughs> I, I actually started practicing Buddhism when I was 18 years old. Uh, I, uh, you know, I was always a really motivated young woman, uh, but I actually had quite a bit of, of unhappiness in my life. I had an eating disorder. I had severe social anxiety, uh, but I had a seeking spirit. I was like, there has to be more uh, to life than this. And that brought me actually, I, I became a confirmed Catholic <laughs> it, because of that seeking spirit. That was the faith I was born into. Uh, but found Catholicism only gave me more heavy and guilt. Um, and in my seeking, I started thinking about and, and went to my local library, started reading about Buddhism. And when I went to college, I actually was able to reach out uh, and find Buddhists and was really lucky to encounter some young women who were practicing a very um, socially progressive form of Buddhism that you could do in your everyday life. And so I started uh, chanting and meditating at 18 years old, and it started transforming my outlook. Um, and I was able to erase the social anxiety and really start learning a mindset of cause and effect and how to expand and understand my power as a human being. Uh, you know, that's from, from 18 to my early 30s, I happily practiced Buddhism. I, I went to law school, I did lots of things, uh, but my, uh, in some ways, my real path to really this mindset approach and actually being able to do more than just apply it to my own life, but like to grow and to come into my, my power totally as a creating a person, like an entrepreneur <laughs> and, and able to guide others. It came when I encountered the modern mystery school uh, and was initiated as an adept into the lineage of King Solomon, which is a 3000 year old lineage. And um, what they gave me was was daily tools that I could put on top of my meditation practice, as well as reinforcing a meditation practice because everybody's practice to know thyself and growth is, it starts with meditation. Like that's just, you have to find the quiet pond within so you have space uh, to know who you are and what you are. Uh, but through studying the Kabbalah and the universal Kabbalah unassociated with any uh, religion and learning spirituality as a science, uh, in my life and being able to apply daily practices is where I really started to get clear boundaries and learn through those clear boundaries, how one can have more energy, um, expand their life and, and really create systems of abundance, uh, in your life. And, and because we're all creators, um, and through the study of Kabbalah, plus my daily Buddhist practice and those other practices I added, it, it just, it just really started to expand in, on itself. And interestingly enough, my, my journey as a professional, so here I am an attorney the whole time. Uh, but I, it, what, what these spiritual practices were able to do is instead of me looking at, uh, being an attorney, like a, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, is it just to be blood? It, it can be drudgery. Like you're taking on other people's problems. <laughs> like it's it, you're, you're, nobody ever calls a lawyer because they're happy. Like, they're, like so uh, yeah, I hated practicing law. Um, I found it to be just uh, awful. Actually, I wrote a poem once about how uh, being a lawyer was like, uh, like the soul sucking vacuum of life and no paycheck was ever a compensation for a lost soul. Like it was just like that soul sucking of, of work to me. Uh, but it wasn't until like, you know, I'm, I'm five, six years into my practice of, of studying Kabbalah and really starting to apply my Buddhist practice back onto it, that going, oh, actually as an attorney, I can help people and I can help people through systems through, through boundaries, through starting to get them to think about containers, like their business is a container 
and you need a container in order to create, right? We all have wombs, like as women, right? That's where the baby comes from. So we think of uh, that as a, as a natural law of abundance. So how do we create a strong container uh, to build our businesses from, to build our lives from? And when I started switching my mindset into my legal practice like that, the sense of drudgery started to be released. But also my boundaries about what I was willing to do and um, work with people on about how I could choose my clients. I didn't have to take in everything that came in the door and I could choose how I practiced law. And I was never meant to be a normal attorney. I didn't work out in law firms well. Um, I laughed too much. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wanted to actually help people and talk to them. I didn't want to just treat people like a transaction. Uh, and I, I oftentimes came up with solutions that didn't involve billable hours. Actually, the last law firm I worked for uh, paid me to go away because they kept thinking I was losing them business uh, because I was counseling people uh, to not sue their neighbors, but like, you know, bring a pie. Let's talk about it. Like there's solutions outside right. of litigation, outside of transaction. Like how do we truly solve your problem? That's incredible. Um, so I'm kind of all over the place on that answer, but... No, no, but that's incredible because I did a bit of research. I went on your website, which is gorgeous, by the way. You're, I mean, you're just you're just glowing. You have beautiful eyes. You're, the, the color of your hair is so beautiful, and it reflects that on the website. I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> but you. in reading the comments at the bottom, um, reviews of your service, one woman was saying how um, it was so refreshing that she found somebody, an attorney who for once didn't just brush her off, um, you know, with a 10 minute or five minute call to just tell her whatever they needed to say and brush her mm -hmm. off. You spent like a lot of time just talking her through it. And, and you know, it just reflects what you were just saying, which is which is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I approach things holistically. You know, and I, I have spent enough time studying the principles of hermetics, uh, cause and effect, which is one of the seven principles of the of, of hermetics. It's the law of the universe that I can't, as an attorney, look at things just from the mundane law of human, right? Because everything we do actually follows the laws of the universe. We can't we can't avoid those. So when I counsel people, I I listen first, and then I honestly tell them what the law can do. But then I step back and I say, let's look at this from an energetic perspective. This is what you can do uh, in, in your situation. And, I, you know, I, I really enjoy that aspect of my practice, but it's very rare uh, for attorneys to, it is, and to be that way. Beautiful it's approach. Rare. Yeah, it's rare that the concept like you said, cause and effect, also known as karma, is openly discussed in modern society. That's right. Yeah. And I find that you've given us so many um, tools right now already. Um, so even asking you this next question, you might have answered a little bit of it, but how would you say you integrate any mindfulness modalities in what you do? Absolutely. Um, so everything I do is based on mindfulness mm -hmm. uh, in a way, you know, because foundation number one to my life is a practice of gratitude. Uh, and because a little bit of gratitude goes a long way uh, to appreciating your life and then being able to see things in another perspective. So, and then foundation number two is meditation. Uh, every day is there some form of meditation that is in my life, whether it's quiet meditation, whether it's problem solving meditation, whether it's active chanting meditation, uh, whether it's working with my tarot cards and runes, like there's, there's a time I'm going into meditation. Uh, and then I also have a daily practice of ritual, like you can call them protocols, but there's things I do every day that solidify both my energy body, ground me to this earth, make sure that I am open and capable of listening, but also that I have strong boundaries. Uh, because without strong boundaries, we're not the container we need to be to be the creator um, that we are meant to be. Uh, and so from that foundation of those daily practices, uh, then I build everything else. And, you know, my, my planning for my life, you know, whether it's, and I have, I have long-term plans, I have short-term plans. Um, and then I have action steps that I'm constantly building from that. But all of that is built on the, on the mindfulness practice, um, which is practice. 
every day. Like you just, it's not meant you're never going to be perfect. Like that's not the goal. <laughs> like um, we're perfect as we are. Like, but the idea in some ways is I will thy will. Like whatever the divine blueprint of my purpose is, that is finding a way to get my monkey mind out of it so that I am into higher mind. Um, but part of that is just being kind to yourself, telling yourself the truth and practicing every day just a little bit um, so that you can get there. Uh, and give yourself the space to be able to tell yourself the truth. Like, telling yourself the truth isn't beating yourself up. Like that's that's old guilt mentality, which comes from religion, comes from society, comes from people shooting on yourself and others um, and judgment. Uh, but you know, if you can give yourself space and just and in kindness to practice, uh, therein lies the first first step. So you can keep stepping forward and. You know, I fail a lot, but I love failing forward because I'm still somewhere further along than where I was before. That's um, so beautiful. So this failing forward. I mean, I feel like I just literally listened to a motivational speech that Denzel Washington was giving and he used those same words. I think the universe is telling me just keep failing forward because <laughs> yeah. it's progress because like. it's progress because it's progress. And I feel like just that little bit that you gave us is going to be so good for our audience because being able to set boundaries is something that's extremely hard for mothers. I think I'm kind of generalizing, but in most cases we are very giving, 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 and we don't think of ourselves and being able to go back within and, you know, take time for yourself. So Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like I do want to, can, can I just, uh, I want to add on that because taking time for yourself is so essential. And we have been taught though, as a society, you know, and I'm, I'm just a dog mom, but I am a caregiver and I've been a step mom and many Absolutely. things and a, a youth leader. So I spent a lot, you, if you don't take time to take care of yourself and nourish yourself, you're going to burn out and then you'll be good for no one. But we've been taught it's selfish to take care of ourselves, which is in some ways negativity coming in from groupthink saying, you know, it's, it's not meaningful to have a self-care practice, but it's so essential. It's so yeah. essential. Boundaries are not like nourishing yourself is so essential to be absolutely productive, helpful human being. And as women, if we're burned out, we're, we're not, we're, we're no good to anybody. We're not good to our family, not good for our families or, or, or whatever it is that we're building and creating That's out there right. as creators. So absolutely yeah, can't overemphasize nourishing yourself. Absolutely. I mean, and was, was that nourishment uh, something that you were doing more proactively during these times of adversities, maybe collectively what the world was going through during in light of the pandemic or even on your personal journeys? Um, what type of modality or tools did you use to come through those adversities? Yeah, so in some ways, yes, I have been doing way more personal nourishment since the pandemic and since um, really fully launching into my own um, multi-pronged <laughs> business endeavor. Uh, however, personal nourishment as a foundation on a, on a daily practice has been with me since I was 18 years old. And I started actively chanting and doing Buddhist meditation because morning and evening is the ideal practice for that. And so from a very young age, like 18 is pretty young to start a daily discipline like that. But like, I'm so blessed that I found that discipline and that discipline like that uh, calls to me. Like I kind of, I, there's a part of me that totally rejects discipline and wants to be spontaneous all the time. But I have found that through discipline, there is freedom. <laughs> so because by building that muscle every day of having something that's nourishing your soul, your heart, actively growing your recognition and, of being alive and awake and that you have power uh, and actually just even having just a tool to refuel, right? Because life is tiring and, and, and resilience is, is based on having a cup that, you know, and some type of reserve, like you're, you know, because you the saying goes, you help yourself, um, well, saying you must, you must be working from a full cup in order to be any, be helpful to anyone. So you have to fill your cup first. Uh, so yeah, like I've had that daily practice uh, since I was 18, since the pandemic started, um, or even, I would say the, the real, place where I actually decided to step forward beyond working with my 
just for myself <laughs> in some ways in that daily practice was 2017 when I decided to take another step and be a, 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 a higher level initiate in the mystery school. And I took on a mission of saying, I'm going to step forward to do work and service to humanity as a whole versus just service to myself. And, you know, it's a, it's a serious commitment to say that I'm going to take that on. And a lot of the work I did then started being service. It's not service that you go out and brag about to other people. It's in fact, a lot of people might not notice, but it's finding ways that we can set energy um, for, you know, events and spaces. Um, And the path of becoming a spiritual guide also means, you know, you can't teach others what you don't know. So I had to say, I'm going to double down on personal development so that I can know how to love myself. I can know how to learn how to know myself better. Like I can practice this. So then I can show someone else the path with my life. And just before uh, the pandemic started, I had taken and officially become initiated and certified as a guide. Um, And that you know, it was me standing up saying my contract in life is to guide others to this specific spiritual path. Uh, but what that meant was, uh, is that in some ways, all the other contracts I had had go out the door, but it also meant I had to double down on, on personal nourishment so that I could be capable of leading others to show them where the path is. You know, you can't be a lighthouse with, with a burned out light bulb. Uh, and then, and then poof, you know, I, I was going out into the world as a new guide and 2020 happens and we have COVID and I'm like, oh, like everything's in lockdown. I, I can't go out to fairs and expos and meet people in the physical, you know, person realm. So instead I had to go within. So I, you know, spent a lot of time, energy um, and effort in the last two years, um, both I took a long, what a a meditation journey, meditation to point zero, where I spent a, you know, a minimum of two hours a day meditating. And at the end of it, I was actually at 10 uh, hours a day of meditation. Uh, and then I've done other healing, uh, like energy healing modalities. I did the King Solomon healing series, which is a 12 week uh, series of, of two hour sessions with a, a guide of mine of doing like energetic work to really literally transform who I am. Like I am a different person from when I started that uh, than when I was after that. Um, and that I think the combination of meditation, seeking healing and coaching yourself, and then, you know, you can call it coursework, but things that are going to actively challenge your personal development. So that, that kind of trio, the threefold stool, you know, if you call it practice, faith and study, uh, or, you know, or, you know, ensuring your personal practices, healing practices, and then learning practices so that you've got full realm of, of, of nourishment that's happening. And I definitely did double down during um, the pandemic and, and still because of the collective consciousness, it's icky right now. And we have to be, you know, those of us who are shining the light have to be all the, all the, all the lighter, <laughs> like, so to speak, so that we can give people hope and that they can find a lifeline um, so that they can find their power and disconnect. Um, from the negativity factory that is uh, the collective consciousness right now. That's a great answer. And I find that it, it, particularly for this audience, which is mompreneurs, we we hope that it resonates so deeply with you so that you know that these are recorded so that you know that you become of service to others and that whatever you do is with compassion. So every client, every person that that comes into contact with you, your business knows that it's a safe place and you're able to really serve with compassion so Mm -hmm. thank you for that answer that's uh, and i love the fact that you bring in some that it's all about authenticity which is a strong core value with tanya and i it's wonderful to see that um tell us a little bit about the laws of abundance and what inspired you to create it yeah, I, I, for some years have wanted to do a podcast and, um, but honestly, I was scared <laughs> to do a podcast. I also didn't know where to start. Technology is not, um, my forte. I, I, uh, you know, I, I just, I have, I have great ideas. I'm a creator. I'm a writer. Uh, but once I start messing around with computers and I get a little frustrated, then all my creativity goes out the window. Uh, and so there was a block as far as uh, the the technology of like, how do I even get a microphone to record the thing? And then how do I put it on the interwebs? <laughs> and so I let that kind of st- those technicalities stop me for a minute. 
However, so a friend of mine at the beginning of the pandemic, she um, invited me to be a guest speaker on um, a solopreneur's, uh, it was a networking group, but it went Zoom. So it was almost like a podcast. And it, we actually, she um, wanted me to talk about landlord tenant law and a couple other things because it's the beginning of COVID here in Seattle, we had rental more um, uh, eviction moratoriums. There's just a lot of stuff. There was things for business people. And I was on the front end of what do we do to get money because our business is shut down? How do we keep a roof over our head? All of that. So I go on to this business person's kind of networking presentation and I, um, I gave a talk and uh, there was a woman listening who was a podcast producer and she's like, your, uh, you know, you, your presentation, your story, who, who you are is just really interesting. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I was like, in fact, I have. <laughs> She's like, well, would you be interested in like, you know, talking more? But I was like, I'd love to. And so we had a chat and then we decided to go for it and launch. And with her support, we were, I was able to articulate kind of where I wanted to go, what my podcast personality might be, um, you know, kind of where the focus was. And that initial idea actually in May of 2020 uh, was that it was going to be a full legal podcast with like a sense of humor twist to it. But what kept happening is when I sat down to write it as a solo cast, I was just like, mm, I don't, I don't want to just tell people about law stuff because that's boring. And who the, <laughs> nobody goes, I want to listen to a lawyer today. Um, tell me what to do. No, like, <laughs> um, so about, you know, so I, we, 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 we produced a couple and then I got stuck. And so I was like, let's take a pause and, uh, when I did the meditation journey, it came to me about how I need to just blend my two worlds. And the podcast is a way to do that. And in, um, the, the title didn't change because it was still going to be, it's still, it's still legal advice from an angel, it's laws of abundance. And that's, that's actually the first title we came up with. Uh, but when I had the aha moment of everything I do is about how do we create systems of abundance in our life? As a, as a divine creating being, like, how do we do that? And, you know, practically speaking for your business or your estate planning versus, and practically speaking for your life uh, from an energetic side, and they, they blend together and there's advice that I can give and, and there's actual laws of the universe to relate that to. Um, and when I repitched that story or she was like, oh my gosh, and there's so much energy behind it. Um, and I was like, yeah, I actually want to write this content. Like, and it comes to me naturally and downloads as I'm meditating or different experiences I have with a friend's clients and loved ones. Uh, so it's just been a natural um, progression from there. And so we were able to create enough content so I could launch this May, you know, relaunching. And then um, it was able to launch actually with the combination of pulling both of my websites together. So the Laws of Abundance podcast literally links my metaphysical practice and my legal practice together so that I, you know, it's just truly me and I don't have to be lawyer me or spiritual guide me. It's just, this is, this is me and everything that I, and that I do. That's amazing because I love people feel like they have to have different personas, which goes back to authenticity and how that affects the somatic body and the different bodies and psychologically also affects us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. It's an amazing podcast. So I encourage people to head on over there. We'll have the description for that um, in, in this podcast as well. So uh, what insights could you share with us, with our audience uh, on how to emerge out of certain challenges or into new opportunities? So, you know, it's easy for me to say, but number one, like, don't let fear stop you. Like that is fear is our negative ego keeping us small. And if you feel fear, that means there's a growth opportunity there. And oh, that's a nice way of saying it. And, but okay, easy for you to say, Angel, because it appears I might be fearless and I love to fail forward, right? But we have to just start with baby steps forward. So if there is fear, like you, we're not asking you to jump all the way to the end of first, but like, just take the first step and take the first step with kindness and just every little step forward every day is going to be, eventually you will emerge. 
right? So if we take the caterpillar to the butterfly example, they have to go into their catalyst and be in that cocoon for some time. If they emerge too soon, they'll die, right? And so that's a lot of our personal transformations and emergence. It has to gestate in its own, in its own time. So we, don't, we need to be patient with ourselves, not rush ourselves, um, but listen to ourselves. Our intuition does know which way for us to go. Um, so if we discredit it, um, then, then we're not listening, right? Uh, so, you know, fear has a place, uh, but it shouldn't be there to stop you. And then I think, you know, ways of managing fear is again, going back to meditation. Uh, and if you've never meditated and you say you can't meditate, I, I, I challenge that by saying there's plenty of apps out there nowadays um, that, that can help you. There's lots of guided meditations online and there's practitioners of the type of meditation I facilitate, max meditation that you can find all over the country. Uh, and um, you know, if, if, you don't, if you don't know how to find one, I'm, I'd be happy to connect anybody to it. But max meditation is a meditation that anyone can do. It's a guided meditation and it's designed for beginners. So it's to get people hooked on meditation, uh, to be honest. So I would say, don't let the voice saying, I can't meditate, stop you because there are so many resources out there. Um, and just five minutes a day of meditation will get you so many more places than no meditation a day. Uh, and, but ultimately I think the biggest thing is, you know, start small, be kind with yourself, uh, but base it all on a practice of self-care and finding ways that you can you can truly listen to yourself. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I mean, this episode I find is jam packed with so many beautiful insights. I thank you for your wisdom. It, it was such a pleasure. You're such a light in this universe. Although I don't know you personally, I feel like you're such a light for this universe. So I thank you very much for being with us. Love, thank you for having me. It's like angel. The, the universe yeah. is angel. Your name suits you. <laughs> yeah. My, mo my mother said God said to name me angel. So there we go. <laughs> thank amazing. you so much. Thank you, angel. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe, follow, like, and share. All of the links are in the description below and continue to be omnipresent.